Welcome to AMRA Music. My name is Alan Compton, Director of Services Representative and Percussion Specialist here at AMRA. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of changing and tuning a drum head on the bottom side or snare side of a concert snare drum. The first thing to do is to determine what drum head you would like to use as the replacement. Since this head's main purpose is to properly activate the snare system, the drum head will need to be a thin, one-ply head that is meant to function as a resonant snare side head. A good choice for a standard snare side head would be the Remo Ambassador Clear snare side head or the Evans 300 snare side head. These heads provide bright resonant tones to facilitate crisp snare response at all dynamic levels without impeding the drum's projection. If you desire a darker tone and a warm snare response that's closer to traditional calf skin, you can't go wrong with a Remo Ambassador Renaissance snare side head. These heads sound fantastic when paired with the Remo Ambassador or Diplomat Renaissance batter head. To remove the existing drum head, you will first need to remove the snare system that stretches across the width of the bottom side of the drum. You don't necessarily need to remove both sides of the snare system to change the snare side head. However, it is a great opportunity to check the snares themselves for any damage or loose snares that can cause unwanted, extraneous snare buzzing. Using a screwdriver or drum key, depending on the specific tool needed for your drum, loosen the retaining bracket for the snare system on the throw-off side of the drum, and pull the untied snare string or plastic strap through the bracket to detach it from the drum. The reason that we're doing this on the throw-off side of the drum is that it is typically more adjustable so there is a little more leeway when reattaching the snare system. Now use a drum key to loosen each tension rod gradually in a star or radio pattern. Loosen the first tension rod, then move to the tension rod directly across the drum from the first rod and loosen it. Move over one tension rod from that spot, loosen that rod, then move to the tension rod directly across from that one. Continue this pattern until you have loosened all of the tension rods where they can easily be turned with your fingers. Loosening and tightening in this pattern will evenly decrease or increase the tension of the drum and reduce any chance of warping the drum's rim. Once each tension rod is less than finger tight, use your fingers to unscrew the tension rods the rest of the way. Leaving the tension rods hanging inside the rim, lift the rim from the drum, carefully guiding the snares through the snare gate, and lay the snares over the side of the drum where they won't get damaged. Now set the rim aside, taking note of the exact position that the rim was sitting on the drum. Ideally, you will want to place that rim back in its original position. Since the snares can only pass through the two snare gates on each side of the rim, this is a fairly easy position to remember. Now that you have the head and rim off of the drum, this is a perfect opportunity to clean both the rim and the inside of the drum. Dust and other foreign particles can end up inside your drum, so it's best to take care of this while the drum is disassembled. Wipe the inside of the drum and the bearing edge, which is the top edge of the shell where the drum head bends downward towards the rim, with a soft cloth like a towel or an old t-shirt. You can also take this opportunity to lightly tighten any casing screws or strainer screws that may have been loosened by the drum's vibrations. Now, place the new drum head on the drum with the head's logo in the desired position. There is no right or wrong position for the logo. Once the head is in the desired position, replace the rim in the exact position that it was before you removed it, with the tension rods lined up with their original casings. When replacing the rim on the drum, you'll want to carefully guide the snare system back through the snare gate from which you originally removed it. You'll reattach those after the snare head is in tune with itself. Insert the tension rods into the casings and tighten them with your fingers until they are as tight as you can get them with no help from a drum key. This should get the head to a good starting point of even tension before you begin to tune the head. Begin increasing the tension of the drum head one tension rod at a time in the radial or star pattern using quarter or half turns of the drum key until the head has reached an audible tone when lightly tapped with a sticker finger. This will not take much tension, so be careful not to exceed two or three half turns per tension rod. Now begin tapping the drum head with the beat of the stick about one inch away from the rim at each tension rod and listen to the pitch. The goal is to adjust the pitch of the head at each tension rod to where they all have matching pitches, thereby making the drum head in tune with itself. Using the drum key, adjust the tension of each rod until the pitches are as close to each other as possible. When adjusting the pitch at each tension rod, it can help to lightly place a finger or two in the center of the drum head to deaden the primary pitch of the head. This can eliminate extraneous overtones that can be misleading to the tuner's ear. Now use the drum key to tighten the drum head, still using the radial or star pattern, to raise the drum to its desired pitch. 
Once you reach the desired pitch, some fine tuning may be necessary to bring the drum back into tune with itself. The pitch of the snare side head should be a little bit higher than the pitch of the batter head to achieve a good response from the snares. If the snare side head is lower than the pitch of the batter head, it is likely that the snares will not respond at all, leaving the drum sounding stifled and without the characteristic snare rasp. Now place the snare system back over the top of the drum head and thread the attachment string or strap through the snare gate on the throw-off side of the drum. With the throw-off in the off position and the snare adjustment knob somewhere in the middle of its tension range, insert the string or strap through the loosened retaining bracket. If you're using string to attach the snares, it's best to tie a square knot with the two ends of the string that will stay on the outside of the retaining bracket. Once the strap or string is threaded through the bracket, re-tighten the screws firmly, being careful not to over-tighten and strip the threading in the screws. Remember not to pull the string or strap through too far, or the tension will be too great for the throw-off to close once you've tightened the bracket back down. The goal is for the snare system to be perfectly centered when the throw-off is in the on position. It might take a couple of tries to get the positioning down, but the snare response will be much better when the snares are centered on the drum head. Once the head has been replaced and the snares are reattached, test that the snares are responding properly. If the snare buzz sounds too loose or lasts too long, you can use the snare adjustment screw to tighten them. If the snare buzz sounds stifled, then you might need to loosen the same adjustment screw. Try your best to adjust the snare tension until the snare sound is activated at all dynamic levels. That's it. Thank you for letting me walk you through the process of changing a snare side head. As you can probably tell, the basic mechanics are not that difficult, and the tuning can become second nature with just a little practice. Thanks a lot. Have a musical day.